Kanye West has been a rap icon for 20 years now. And not only has he made a huge stamp in the game when it comes to music, he's also done the same thing when it comes to fashion. There have been so many different trends set by Kanye and emulated by millions of people. I feel like it's only right because this is a sneaker channel, we talk about his top five most iconic sneakers of all time. And if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA show. So let's go ahead and get it started with the first shoe and that is the Bapesta College Dropout. Originally releasing in 2007, Kanye West had a strong relationship with Nigo, the originator of Bape, and because of that, they decided to do a collaboration sneaker to go on alongside with his album. And I'm pretty sure everybody knows about the College Dropout because that time during that era, Whew. There were a lot of amazing tracks on that album. Now, as we all know, the Bape looks very similar to the Air Force One. You just have more of a lightning bolt with a star on the side, and that gives you a little bit different Air Force One-esque vibes to it. But because that's such a known and trusted model, it makes it a little bit easier for this one to trend within a lot of people because people already have a natural tendency of liking the Air Force One. Also, we can't forget to mention, yes, Bape is still a hot brand right now, but I vividly remember back in 2007, Bape used to be on fire and everybody loved getting their gear the shoe was kind of low-key and hard to get but at the same time if you know you know type situation and because of that it had always been kind of a grail for a lot of sneaker heads over the years time goes by next thing you know more pairs get worn price continues to increase and now you look at current pairs on the market there's used pairs out there for ten thousand dollars now i'm not saying that ten thousand dollar shoe is going to sell but what i can say is the shoe is pretty expensive now before we get into the next sneaker i was considering putting the babes does a little bit higher on the list but then i thought about the significance to the sneaker culture and the overall community of people knowing about these models and how it impacted other people so that's why i decided to put these a little bit lower on the list but at the same time i knew for a fact they had to at least be in the top five because these were a Definitely a huge stamp in the game when it comes to sneakerheads. Next up right here, we have the Kanye West Louis Vuitton collaboration, also known to the sneakerheads as the Jaspers. If anybody remembers back in 2009 when these came out, Kanye West used to always call himself the Louis Vuitton Don. I know, I know, I've been called the Louis Vuitton Don. I've been called a lot of names, uh, mostly the Don, the Louis Vuitton Don. And due to what has happened, what has happened so severely, when the red shoes hit the runway, I was forced to change my name to Martin Louis the King Jr. Uh, address me as such. And until then, I will be in the building swagger on a hundred thousand trillion. And because of that, and speaking it into existence with all his different flares of fashion and ways that he expressed himself through his outfits and his different accessories, it actually ended up giving him an opportunity to create his own collaboration with Louis Vuitton. By this time in 2009, we had already seen college dropout, late registration, and graduation. <laughs> I don't even know which one of those is the best albums. Honestly, they were all fire. But as you can tell, there was definitely a lot of hype and buzz around Kanye West's name. So that definitely created a huge demand for this sneaker. But these in particular happened to be a designer collab which caused the shoe to be way more expensive when it comes to the retail price and then you know the resale was even higher now back then spending a thousand or two thousand dollars on a pair of shoes was a whole lot of money i get in current time yes if you spend a couple thousand dollars on a shoe that may be like an off-white or a travis scott collab i get that but if you were spending a thousand or two thousand dollars on some sneakers you were like a madman that's like almost like spending ten or fifteen thousand dollars on a sneaker now so this shoe in particular was a grail and i think still is a grail to all the og heads and the people that were young coming up in the game at the time but at this time in 2009 i can guarantee you a lot of people had their eyes on these trying to get their hands on them these three colorways were actually inspired by his friends also known as his entourage and they're actually a lot of celebrities that you guys know to this day especially like somebody like don c we've seen a lot of great collabs from him as well which low-key we should make a video about him someday but you also had his friend mr hudson and then jasper as well now when it comes to the other two colorways like the white and the black those were definitely really clean shoes but everybody really had their eyes on the jaspers or especially the low tops the all red pair whew, that was like everybody's grills and mind you this was before the red octobers came out now all those louis vuitton collaborations that i just showed you right there honestly they're all grills to me on my list and i have yet to ever own a pair in my collection so one day if i ever have the opportunity to work a trade or buy a pair i'm definitely going to be looking into that because i would love to have those in my collection next up on the list at third place this is going to be an interesting one i'll explain it but we're gonna go with the 750 Adidas Yeezy Boost. Now the reason why I chose this shoe in particular is when he came, 
to Adidas and this was his first time and everybody had all this madness. There was a lot of hype and these shoes were already selling for $1,000 and everybody was going crazy for them and the resale price was already just insane off the rip and the materials and the cuts and everything, people liked it. But even though there was issues with the zippers and all those other factors, there was just still a crazy demand behind this shoe. Now when the 350 came out, the turtle doves, the pirate blacks, different things like that, that kind of opened up the door to a whole nother level and a whole nother game. Now. I'm having a hard time kind of deciding, so I want you guys to let me know down below in the comment section what you think, whether it should be the Yeezy 750 or the Yeezy 350, because honestly, I feel like they both had a huge role in the game, but I think one that actually stands out and is more iconic to me than those two models is the Yeezy 350 V2. The reason why I say that is, I think they perfected the 350, made it a little bit more snug, a little bit more comfortable. And because of that, they just went crazy with all the colorways. And honestly, it took over the game for a couple years. You saw everybody wearing those shoes. And still to this day, a lot of people wear those shoes. So when it comes to the 350 V2s, I think that has to be on this list. And we have to mention it. You guys know I'm not really a Adidas Yeezy type of guy. I like Nike Yeezys and different other collaborations, but it is what it is. <laughs> But either way, I think those have to be on the list. So let me know what you guys think about that down below in the comment section. There's a lot of great colorways. I understand why people like it. I, I, I used to own some. I used to wear some. I tried it. I gave it a try. I gave it a shot. Just wasn't for me. It is what it is. But either way, let's take it to the next two because these next two changed the game before Adidas was even thought about. And that is the Nike Air Yeezy 1. Oh my gosh. Where do I start? I remember the glow in the dark tour seeing him wearing those on stage knowing like i saw all the photos from the different award shows and the different samples that had been coming out knowing that nike had the collaboration with kanye and this is going to be the first model and we saw all the different meshed different you know just iconic shoes that came together to create that one but he also did it with his own twist and then to create it with the same colorways similar to the louis vuitton collaborations and having those kind of more similar to that as well with the different touches oh man i don't again this now this one for me hits home in a whole different way because if you haven't seen before i got the entire set and i wore them to graduation back in high school back in the day and all the different things like that but either way there were just so many iconic moments when it came to the Yeezy ones. I don't know which one to begin with. And I know that a lot of people do have different memories for that sneaker or different samples that they may have seen. And then also to talk about pricing of the shoe, it was kind of hard to get and it was kind of low key. It was a tier zero drop. Not every single store had them, all those different situations. But at the same time, you were spending, you know, four or 500 bucks for a pair of Yeezys. And that was like breaking the bank. That was like, damn, you really spent $500 on a pair of Yeezys? That's crazy. And I know, yes, like I said earlier, relative to time now, that's like nothing, right? We get that. But during that time, that was a lot of money. And that was a huge grill for a lot of people to get them in their collection. People were buying sizes just to get a pair, knowing they didn't fit and they were too small or too big or whatever just to say that they had them and they was wearing them i remember all the scenarios when everybody had them back in the day and i was happy to be able to complete that set and put it together for myself as well but either way this shoe made a huge stamp in the game and i think i would easily put this at number one if it weren't for the Yeezy 2. The Platinum and the Solars dropped and there was a crazy demand for this sneaker. It was a regional thing, so it was on two different sides of the country. People were getting them over here, different colorways over there. Next thing you know, people were trying to figure out who they could hit up on a different side to give them from over here. It was just so many different things that people were trying to get tapped in to get the shoes. And the hype for the two was way bigger than it was for the ones. The ones were kind of low key. They set the tone. People were going after them. They were doing their thing. But a few years later, after all that hype and that demand, because you got to think, this was like 2009 when the Yeezy ones came out. And then like 2012 and 2014 or something like that, when the Yeezy twos with the red Octobers and all that stuff. So when those came out, you got a few years of anticipation, more hype, more branding, more things going on. Kanye doing his thing with all the different albums and the collaboration and Jay-Z and everything like that. Speaking of that, Jay-Z, 
Jay-Z nicknamed him Khan Yeezy, which caused him to eventually name himself Yeezy, and because of that, that's what came with the Yeezy ones. So it's crazy to think about all the different moments and all the things that happened, and trust me, I low-key feel like at this point, we're talking about the iconic sneakers and how big they impacted the game with the styles, fashions, culture, all the different things, but low-key, each one of these shoes on the list, they deserve their own video with the entire history and breakdown. If you guys wanna see something like that, let me know down below in the comment section, and let me know which pairs you think are in the top five when it comes to most iconic sneakers or models by Kanye West with his collaborations. And man, the Air Max 180s, those were crazy. The Reeboks that he did back in the day, the Jordan 6, the other Jordan 6, there's, trust me, there's a bunch of different shoes, but I think when it comes to the culture of sneakers and the impact on uh, the consumer and all those different things, I feel like these five models had the biggest impact in the game. And uh, again, it's all opinion based. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you wanna see more videos like this, let me know down below in the comment section. All right, y'all, I'm out. I would never let you down. Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there. Hey, the only choice I like to make what I'm aware of. I would never if you made it to the end of this video drop a comment down below and let me know what is the greatest Kanye album of all time <laughs> this is gonna be fun let you down and send my DNA the only choice I like to make what I'm aware today I was made for it it's in the DNA I was made for it it's in the DNA <laughs>